Hey guys, CB Super. Today I'm going to be making rain inside of DaVinci Resolve 16.2. I'm going to be using the Fusion tab and I'm going to be using a particle system to create procedural raindrops. The raindrops we're going to be making today are going to be these raindrops. It's pretty simple to make. It only takes a couple nodes using the particle system. If we look at the footage without any rain, we can see that we've got a lot of things going for us. One, she has an umbrella and the ground is mostly wet. This is the rain that we're going to try and mimic we're going to be using this as reference video so this is the fusion comp we already built it we're going to go ahead and make a brand new fusion comp and drop it right next to it and this is where we're actually going to start building our rain system with my player head parked over my fusion comp i'm going to go ahead and jump into the fusion page and get started the first thing that i like to do is i like to set the resolution for my comp and to do that i'm actually going to bring in a background image to drive the resolution i'm going to go ahead and plug that into the media output and then I'm actually going to bring in that video footage of the rain that I got from Pixabay just so I can keep this on the right side and have something to use as reference. So as I look at this, I see that there's quite a bit of rain. It's very clear. And if I was to press play, we can see that it looks like it's long streaky. In fact, if, if I even zoom in here, we can see that there's you know quite a bit of uh, that's a good amount of length, but there is some length variance. So in order to uh, try and mimic that, we're gonna have to probably use a bitmap node inside of our particle emitter. So let's go ahead and start bringing out particle system nodes. So the two nodes that I'm gonna absolutely need is an emitter and a renderer. And I can find those actually right here on the toolbar. So I'm just gonna go ahead and grab the emitter and the renderer, and I'm going to move them over just a little bit, take the output from the renderer and drop it right into the output of the background node. That's gonna automatically merge the system into the foreground and the background node will be in the background. So I'm gonna go ahead and just grab this merge and toss this up into my other viewer, maybe make it a little bit smaller. And immediately we can see that it's already starting to work. So if I press play, we'll see that the particle systems are starting to build at frame zero all the way to frame 119. Right now our particles go ahead and start being born at frame zero. We're gonna want them to already be born. So in order to do that, let's go into the particle rendering system and we're gonna go ahead and pre-generate these frames. I'm just gonna pre-generate 100 frames or so. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow that these are already gonna be born at frame zero as if it were already at frame 100. And that's gonna work out well for us. I'm also gonna kill particles that leave the view just because I don't need particles to continue on. It's just gonna eat up more processing power and it's not really necessary. So that's pretty much it in the particle rendering system. One thing we are not going to click is we are not going to come over here to the last tab and click on this motion blur. You can do that at your own risk, but just be wary that if you do add motion blur to your system, it is going to probably take a very long time to render. Let's go ahead and jump over to the particle emitter. The first thing we're going to need to do is solve this little issue of all we see is a sphere. Well, I would like this to be a rectangle and I want it to cover the entire frame. So I need to come into the emitter and come into the fourth tab, which is the region tab. And right where it says region up here on the top, I'm gonna to go ahead and click on it. And I wanna change this to rectangle. There's the width and the height slider. I'm gonna go ahead and take this height and extend it up beyond the actual frame size. And same with the width, I wanna extend that all the way. Now you'll notice by default, it only goes to the end of the frame. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in like a 0.2 just to push it a little bit further. And that's just because I've been having some issues where sometimes when I render out the particle system, the particles are either being killed off a little too soon or they're not fully rendering on the screen. So generally what I'll do is I'll push it beyond the actual frame size. So in the particle system, now I'm gonna go to the next tab in, which is the style tab. And right where it says style, I don't want points. So I'm actually gonna come down to bitmap because I wanna make my own sprite. I wanna make my sprite look just like these lines of this actual rain. And in order to do that, the easiest way is to actually just use a polygon tool. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a polygon and I'm just going to drop it here in the center of the frame. Now you have to play around with the actual size to get the correct size that you want for your emitter. And you can always size it up and down, but I find that using a larger sprite is a little bit easier than using a smaller sprite. So let's go ahead and take this polygon and now I need to give it just a little bit of border width. And I also need to load it into the viewer so I can actually see it. 
that's going to be way too thick. Let's just make it a little bit skinnier. Something like that will work out pretty well. I'm going to give it just a little bit of soft edge. I'm probably going to put it to maybe 0 0.02, just so it's a little bit softer than just a hard line. And then I'm actually going to drop this level down to 0.3. So if we look over at our reference image, you know, it's not super visible. So we don't necessarily want our raindrops to be overpowering. So now I can go ahead and plug this polygon into the emitter. And now that we've set it up to receive a bitmap, it will go ahead and receive an image. So if we take a look at the merge into the viewer, we can actually see our rendered system as it is. So if I press play, you'll notice that they don't actually move anywhere. All they do is they're born, they stay there, and then they die. So that's not necessarily what we want. We really just want to look at the actual, how this looks in compared to the actual size of the raindrops over here on the right. And so they look pretty good. If I zoom into them a little bit, you can see they're kind of faded, just like these are kind of faded. We might be able to blur these even a little bit more by just dropping the level down a little bit and maybe giving it just a little bit more soft edge. So that's looking pretty good. Now, in order to give this some kind of movement, we're gonna go ahead and come into the particle emitter. We're gonna jump over to the controls tab, which is gonna be the very first tab. We're gonna go ahead and uh, play with these numbers here in a second, but the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over to velocity and I'm gonna turn the velocity all the way up. In fact, I'm actually gonna boost it up a little bit more. I'm gonna put it up to maybe 1.2 and then I'm going to give it a little bit of velocity variance, not too much, maybe just to 0.2 or somewhere around there. The angle, so right now, if I was to press play, you'll see that they are actually just going to be pushing from left to right, which isn't what we want. I want to change this angle to a negative 90, will make it fall straight down. So if I was to press play, you'll see that they just fall directly down, which could be useful but i think i actually want them to fall at more of like an angle you'll notice that this isn't 90 degrees this is more like 70 ish degrees so i'm going to come in here and just type in negative 73 and that will get them to fall at an angle but now i actually have to move my sprite because right now the sprite is not facing in the same direction as the angle that it's falling so it'll look a little weird rotate it right here just until I get roughly the same angle as the rain over here. You can see that the rain kind of falls in this fashion. That'll probably get me right around where I want to be. I know that this is just going to fall and it's all going to look very uniform and that's not necessarily what I want. So I'm in between the particle emitter and the particle renderer. I'm going to hit shift space to bring up my quick select tool and I'm going to type in P turbulence and that's going to give me the particle turbulence node which is nice for giving you a little bit of turbulence in either your x y or z and i'm going to give myself a little bit more turbulence in the x so that they're kind of moving a little bit more left and right i don't necessarily need to give it too much turbulence in any of the others and but one thing i do like to do is usually hit the reseed and i'll actually do that for the emitter as well i'm going to go ahead and reseed it and then I'm gonna turn my number emitter all the way up to 100 because I want a whole lot of particles. Once we increase the particles though, we're also gonna to need to increase the lifespan because right now our particles are only lasting 100 frames, which might work if we didn't pre-generate frames. So just to be safe, I'm gonna go ahead and bump it all the way up to 1,000. It's not really gonna to matter too much because anything past 119 is actually gonna get killed off anyhow because it's gonna restart the simulation. So the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna come over to this background node and I'm just gonna drop the alpha all the way down and that's gonna give me a transparent background, which is exactly what I'm going to want to superimpose this on any footage. So I'm going to jump over to the edit tab and take a look at it. It might take a few minutes to actually let it cache, but once this red bar becomes blue, like this bar over here, then it'll be ready to view in real time. So you may have to wait a little while, and depending on how fast your computer normally renders things, it might even help to either turn the playback down a little bit. So if you need to turn the playback down while you're just you know, finessing your animation, you can always come down to playback proxy mode and then you can turn it to either half or quarter resolution. I would kind of refrain from using quarter or half resolution when you're actually trying to refine the look of your particle or your sprite. I would only use it when you're actually trying to refine the actual animation because that's the time where you're actually going to need a little bit faster playback versus if you're just looking at something it's a little bit easier if you can see the full detail resolution of it. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this media pool just so we have a little bit more screen real estate and i think it looks pretty good all right so that is procedural rain using a particle system and so this is the one i did earlier today and then this is the one that we created using these new settings 
it works out pretty well and I think it looks pretty good if we look at it compared to the actual rain I think this still looks a little bit more hardier and that's probably because we could probably add a few more raindrops into the particle system itself all right so that's pretty much it for me I hope you guys got something out of this if you have any questions go ahead and leave them down in the comments if you like this video make sure to like and subscribe hit that bell notification and I will see you guys in the next one thanks